Good morning and welcome to Take Your Life Back Today show with me, Ralph Friedrichs. Another beautiful day out here in the Hampton Bay, Long Island area. And today's topic, because it is so sunny, it is so warm, and we just had a holiday, a summer holiday. And like I said in my previous episode, I saw the police just pulling people over, the spot checks. So, today's topic is 10 tips for a sane and sober summer. You can still have a good time. You can still stay sober. You can still be tempted, but know what to do about it. First, I want to give a shout out to Larry Geis from the Geis Academy at 516-485-2741. That's 516-485-2741. Larry Geis is an addiction recovery coach, a life coach. He can help take your life back. Give him a call at 516-485-2741. Go to his website at www.odysseyconsultant.org. That's www.odysseyconsultant.org. Larry Geis from the Geis Academy will walk with you from day one of your addiction recovery program or plan to whenever you, uh, uh, or as long as he needs to do to help you. But you need to contact him at 516-485-2741, 516-485-2741. That's Larry Geis from the Geis Academy, www.odysseyconsultant.org. Tell Larry when you speak to him that you heard about him on your Take Your Life Back Today show with Ralph Friedrichs and let Larry help take your life back. Give a shout out to GlobalEyeglasses.com. They are focused on saving you money. They have this new program that was launched last week which allows you to sit wherever you are and try on their frames. You can try their frames on by ordering a few frames, get them home, ship to your house, show them to your neighbors, show them to your friends, look in the mirror, try them on. The ones you don't like, send them back for a full refund. The ones you do like, let us put the lenses in there. And here is the key to the whole thing. GlobalEyeglasses.com's prices are so low compared to any brick and mortar freestanding store that you can get progressives, transitions, photochromatics, high index, uh, uh, anti flecting coating, all those special features on these lenses at about 65 to 75% less than any other uh, freestanding store out here, for an example, out in Hamptons, Long Island. A good pair of progressive glasses or a pair of progressive glasses can run you anywhere from $700 to $1,000 for a set of glasses. On GlobalEyeglasses.com for less than $200 you can get the same. But you need to go to www.GlobalEyeglasses.com, try their own home uh, uh, trial at home frames. All you really have to spend on the whole thing to try them at home is the postage to get them back to Global Eyeglasses. That's it. Other than that, you just spend for whatever purchase you make, but to try the frames on, if you don't like them, send them back to GlobalEyeglasses.com. www.globaleyeglasses.com. They are focused on saving you money. Great thing is, is I have over 30 years experience in the optometry field. All you need to do is get in touch with me at 631-599-0218. Like over a hundred and so people that have done so already, I will help you with your frames, your lenses. I will guide you the right way to make sure that you get the proper fitting. Get a hold of me at 631-599-0218. You can also get my hotline at 844-405-HELP, globaleyeglasses.com. They are focused on saving money. Ten tips for a sane and sober summer. For some reason, summer always strikes me as a tough uh, season to stay sober because we, no matter which way, no matter how long you've been sober and how strong you are, you're always going to have that temptation when you see your friends, when you see people at the beach just having a good time with their beers. Maybe because of the energy it brings or the increased number of cookouts and drinking that goes on. Granted, I didn't need the summer excuse previously before I became sober to get drunk, but I'm certain I used it anyway. If you are new to sobriety, or if you're like me and get a, a little nostalgia, here are 10 tips for the sane and sober summer. And there is no shame in admitting that you are tempted at times. Number one is stay connected to other sober people. It helps to surround yourself to sober people. Believe it or not, when I do my show, when I do my websites, I feel as I am around sober people. Because if you're watching me, you either are... Uh, in recovery, you're seeking recovery, or you have family that's seeking recovery, or is or are in recovery. 
So I feel like you and I, every day, get together, and we are sober or trying to get sober ourselves, and, and that is good company. Whether it's via online chats, support groups, or face-to-face -face meetings, or videos, you can never have too many sober people in your life to support your absences. Uh, these folks can help you if you get stuck or have questions about certain situations, and in some cases can even help you through sticky uh, situations themselves. Number two is you need to be honest. If you feel like drinking or using, tell someone that can help you decide uh, if that's a right choice for, for now. And uh, usually, I will tell you this right now, it's never a right choice to make a, uh, to start drinking. An old drinking buddy or a drug dealer might not be the best person to ask if you're running into a situation where you're tempted. Uh, they will probably just say, go ahead, one won't kill you. Try reaching out to uh, other people who seem to be enjoying sobriety just as much as you and get their feedback. Lean on other people. Use other people as crutches. I would say you can utilize Larry Geist from the Geist Academy at 516 uh, 485-2741. You can rely on people or use people like myself at 631-599-0218. As a crutch, you can get a hold of me at TakeYourLifeBackTodayShow.com. Number three. Try to avoid old people, places, and things. You know those old haunts uh, we used to frequent and inevitably find ourselves drunk or high before leaving. You remember those days or those places? Even if your intentions are just to pop in and say hello to the good old crowd or let people know how, that you're sober now, uh, it might not be wise to wait until you have the opportunity to check your motives honestly because why would you just pop in the bar where you used to drink just to say, hey guys, I'm sober now because your motives deep down, in, deep down inside might be because you are seeking that drink and that's when you need to make a, uh, 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 an assessment of that uh, whole situation. Try reaching out to people who seem to be enjoying, uh, excuse me, um, it might not be wise to wait until you have the opportunity to check your motives. Uh, there were many times where um, I put myself into unsafe areas, especially in the beginning of my sobriety when I used to go into the liquor shop to get my lottery. Now, it is not a problem at all. I walk in, get my lottery, don't even care about what's in there. Number four, there is a safety in numbers. If you absolutely have to attend gatherings where you cannot avoid, where people will be drinking or getting high, bring a sober friend to communicate, to lean on. Make sure that uh, he or she is aware of the situation, completely comfortable being your wing person. Have a serious conversation before the event about a plan of action should temptation, should anything uh, happen uh, or try to happen in reference to drinking or getting high. Have a backup plan. Have a plan. Number five, if you're going out, whether it be alone or with someone else, it's always great to have a plan in your back pocket. What time will you get there? What will, hap uh, what will be happening when you get there? Uh, I find that it's usually a safe bet to arrive early when the party is just getting started because people are still sober. That way I can stay busy and help the hosts and set up if needed. In my experience, showing up late has never been an awesome idea. People are often too drunk and too high and will try to suck you into the uh, vacuum of drunkenness or highness. And sometimes even they are obnoxious. Excuse me. Have the backup plan. As we all know, things don't always get out the way we plan. Sometimes we take a sober friend or a gathering so that we can feel safer, and he or she decides that they had enough with sobriety and fall off the wagon and have a relapse. What now? Don't panic, I tell you. We are not responsible for other people's recovery. You are there, yes, to lean uh, on that person or let that person lean on you. You are there to coach that person, but you are not ultimately responsible for that person. It's always a terrific idea to have a backup plan that involves getting you out of a sticky situation that means, uh, even if it means that you need to leave alone. If you need to leave that person, it is what it is. Number seven, understand that you are not perfect. Everything is a process. Being sober is no different. There is no perfect way to get, uh, st uh, to get and stay sober. And mistakes will be made. We will, uh, we will say and do um, wrong things all the time. We will disappoint people. Try to understand that these mistakes are all part of the process. If we can learn from them, 
they'll never be wasted. They enable us to make better choices in the future and find out what doesn't work so we know for next time. Life is all about lessons and it's so important that we learn uh, to forgive ourselves. Very important because you will make mistakes. Mistakes don't have to define us. It's what we do with those mistakes what makes us better. If you make a mistake, learn and move on. Number eight, be kind to yourself. I wish I could tattoo that on my forehead backwards so that when I look in the mirror I see it saying be kind to you. Those are the words, be kind to you. Um, I don't know why it's such a difficult one but I'll admit struggling with it a lot over the years. I am my own worst critic. I always judge myself and quite often am much too uh, busy focusing on the negative to give myself posit uh, credit for the positive. I have since sobriety came into my life have become more positive not only with my surroundings and with other people but more importantly with me. Um, we all we are all works in progress and deserve respect for that. Let's try to be as forgiving to ourselves as we would forgive others. It's uh, so easy to get wrapped up in, the, uh, in other people's situations, other people's problems and we take the focus off ourselves. Where at the end of the day, there is no time for other people as much as you need to have time for yourself. It is good to spread your love, your joy, your gratitude to all people in your life. But more importantly, you need to spread it to yourself. You need to be able to look in the mirror and say, I love me in order to love someone. I am happy in order to be happy with other people. Get it? Number nine, take everything one day 24 hours at a time. There is no accelerated course in sobriety or in life. For each day sober, we get one more day of sobriety and one day to look forward to being sober. Those days, those days add up, but it still comes down to one day, 24 hours at a time. Alcoholism and addiction don't care how long I've been sober. An old friend of mine used to say, the longer we're away from the drink or the drug, the closer we are to one. I guess this means that time away from the pain can cause us to forget how bad it was and maybe start to think it's okay just to have one. Don't have that thinking. Um, I do my best to stay in today and connect with uh, other people that are still suffering through my videos, through my radio through my websites. Uh, this both supports me and it supports you and others around me and it reminds all of us that sobriety is worth keeping up. Sobriety is worth living because a 24 hour day today sober guarantees you a sober tomorrow to start the day. It is up to you then to continue that chain have another 24 hours sobriety for another 24 hours in the future, etc., etc. Number 10, think to drink or drug through. Whenever I start to think about just having one, I think through to the end of uh, what the scenario will be from having that one. First of all, there has been very few times that I've had uh, one of anything in my life uh, that goes right down to chocolate, cookies, right to alcohol. Uh, secondly, what's the point of just having one? I'll be honest, I see no fun at all of having one because I want to make sure that I would get drunk. So just have one is a, uh, a, a not a realistic scenario in my life. So let's imagine I get drunk today, then what? What then? Then it's only a matter of time until I be uh, uh, kind of ignoring people around me, my grandchildren and uh, Maybe I'll start going to bed early every night again. Uh, sooner or later, it will turn into a daily event, and I'll be lucky if I don't pass out drunk while um, I'm even watching my grandchildren. That's when possibly my grandchildren don't even want to be around me anymore. Maybe I'll stay. On, maybe I'll get so drunk that I'll be kicked out of my house, and I'll have to stay in the shelter, uh, or my my beautiful wife will divorce me. Maybe I'll uh, then have to stay in that shelter alone, single again. By the time I thought uh, the drink through to the end, I'd much rather be dealing with my sober life knowing that I have everything positive 
in my life. No amount of alcohol, no amount of marijuana, no amount of cocaine equals the amount of happiness that you, that I, if we're sober, I am, have in my life. And if you want to have that, all it is for you to break the wall of denial down. Oh, but more importantly, you need to start having some, uh, some fun for the summer. And you can with sobriety. Sobriety is not a death sentence for fun. Not only do I enjoy myself more now that I am sober, but I actually remember the stuff that I do, which is an amazing task in itself. What a concept sobriety is. With all this said, let's have an amazing summer and let's move forward. A quick recap on the 10 tips for a sane and sober summer. Stay connected to other sober people is so important, folks, because when you stay connected to other people's uh, other sober people, they are crutches. They are people you can lean on. That is super important to do in your life. As much as you need to do that to them, let other people do it to you as a person in sobriety. You need to be honest. If you feel like drinking or using, tell someone that can help you. One of your supporter, uh, maybe your sponsor, maybe people like me. If you feel like you're going to have a drink, reach out, be honest, tell someone so we can nip it in the butt while you still have a chance. Try to avoid old people, uh, old friends, and old hangouts because what in the world uh, would that get you into um, if you did that? Now, in other words, those old people, those old hangouts will bring back the old you, and you don't want that. There is no reason to stop at the bar that you used to hang around, hang around and just to say hello and tell people that you're sober because there is subconsciously something inside you that is making you want to do that, and you don't want to do that. You really don't, and if you do, you need to take inventory of yourself and find out what is triggering you off before it's too late. Because if you have to go to the bar to tell people that you're sober, you probably want to have a drink. Uh, there is a safety in numbers. Uh, when you go in uh, to, when you attend gatherings, family gatherings, work gatherings, parties, try to hang around with one or two of sober people, because numbers will uh, gang up on you and just say, have that one drink, and you cannot even have one. Have a plan of action. If you are going out, whether it being alone with someone else, it's always great to have a plan. What if it doesn't turn out the way you are? How will you exit this particular function? Have a plan of action. A backup plan is always important to have, so try to have that one. Understand that you are not perfect. Everything is a process. Being sober is no different. There is no way, uh, no perfect way to stay sober and mistakes will be made. We will say and do things that are wrong all the time. So don't knock yourself down. Don't beat yourself up. Things can happen, but the object, the plan here is to avoid them from happening. Be kind to yourself. If I could t uh, put... Be kind to yourself backwards, like this, and look in the mirror. I would see that every day because I am my worst critic. I will knock myself down when things aren't going smoothly. Uh, and uh, I need to, uh, and I have been, learning to be more positive, not only in my own life, but in other people's lives. Uh, so be kind to yourself. Number nine is take everything one day at a time. There is a reason they say 24 hours at a time because... If you plan next week to be sober, you have to now each and every day work on next week. But if you plan on today is your day of sobriety, only today, the next day will happen automatically. So plan on one day at a time, 24 hours a time. There is no accelerated course in sobriety or in life. For each day sober, we get one day of sobriety and etc. etc. And think to drink and drug through. Whenever I start to think about just having one, I think through to the end and think of the scenario, what will happen at the end. First of all, there has been very few times that I have said just one in anything, whether it being chocolate, candy, cookies, including drinks. So, just one means getting drunk, and I will avoid that at every cost, any cost, because the repercussion of one or five drinks is equally tragic, equally uh, uh, not in my best interest. So, think it through. 
think of the old days. What happened when you had a couple drinks? Your children would be put to bed early so you can go to bed early. Your grandchildren uh, would come over and you wouldn't even speak to them. You'd be passing out. You wouldn't remember where you were going with anyone or saying to anyone. These are the things you need to think through. So, just one is probably equal to I'm going to get drunk, I'm going to get high. And I say this, and I say this with such happiness, have fun this summer. Sobriety is not, and I repeat, sobriety is not a death sentence for fun. Not only do I enjoy myself more that I, now that I am sober, but I actually remember the stuff that I did yesterday or a week ago. What a concept sobriety is, folks. Let's have an amazing summer together. Let's lean on each other. And together, we will enjoy the holidays coming up. And you can do that without having any sort of alcohol, any sort of drug. Folks, I say this all the time, and it's so important that you hear me out. If you can dedicate just today a sober day to me, just 24 hours, give me 24 hours. I promise you that tomorrow you'll start the day already a better person, a sober person. And then repeat that pattern over and over. And the next thing you know, you'll be at a year sober, two years sober, five years sober. But you have to do 24 hours at a time. And remember all these changes that we speak about. The changes financially, spiritually, relationship, uh, changes physically, all happen with very small steps. A lot of effort has to be put into it, but they all happen in small steps. So if you think you're going to see changes tomorrow, if you start today, it's not going to happen. But as time goes on, a week, a two, you're going to start seeing changes, tremendous changes. But it all starts when you start admitting you have a problem. Break that wall of denial down around you and say, I know I have a problem. There is no shame in you admitting you have a problem. If anything, people will respect you even more because you have finally realized that you have a disease called alcoholism or drug addiction and that you are seeking help and that makes you a special, better person. Seek for your higher power for guidance and direction and teach your children to say no to drugs and alcohol daily let your children look through their little eyes at you as their hero. Let them see as you as their role model. Don't drink, don't smoke, don't use profanity around your children. Never ever physically abuse a person, but definitely don't drink, smoke, or use profanity around your children. Teach them to be just like you, and the only way to be like you is for you to make the changes today. Tomorrow might be too late. For a lot of people, there is no tomorrow. People will be closing your eyes for the last time, taking their last breath. That's why if you're seeing me right now, no matter where you are, you might be in your living room, you might be in your kitchen, you might be in a correction facility, you might even be in a homeless shelter. If you're seeing me now, make the changes while you can today, for tomorrow might not be there. I am here 24-7 at 844-405-HELP or 631-599-0218. Larry Geis is here for you at 516-485-2741. That's Larry Geis at the Geis Academy. Or you can find him on the web at www.odysseyconsultant.org, www.odysseyconsultant.org. If you need eyeglasses, go to www.globaleyeglasses.com where they are focused on saving you money. Folks, I hope you got something out of today's segment. What I got out of this is that I can still have a great summer being sober. I will probably have a better summer being sober. Why? Because I will remember exactly what I did. I will be around people that I love and I will see them clearly as they should be seen. Folks, I hope to God each and every one of my friends, of, of maybe even total strangers in my audience, has the best day of their lives. But more importantly, I hope to God that all my friends in my audience, all the people that are watching me for the first time in my audience, I hope to God that, and I pray to God that you all have a sober day. And I hope that sobriety continues in your life for the rest of your life. Prolong your life with sobriety. 
and may God bless you.